testing. Anybody here? Yep, you sound good. Well then I guess I'm not having problems with voice. Testing. Anybody here? Always a win. Yep, you sound good. Well then I guess I'm not having problems with voice. Testing. Testing, testing. Sounds good. Hi, Aki. Um, hello, everybody. Hi, Kathy. Is that Kathy? Yeah. We are streaming live now. Woohoo! Hey folks, how's everybody doing? Yeah, I'm good. Um, yeah, I have a I have a decent update, I think, for um, Animesh, which is that I. Th I think we're about ready to submit a build for QA for the project viewer. Um, that doesn't guarantee that it'll turn into a project viewer immediately because it's always possible that QA will find some horrible thing that I'm not aware of, but uh, at least I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that we're uh, getting close. Um, the stuff I've been working on most recently has been uh, trying to hammer out the remaining issues with the uh, transform matrices of, of attached animesh objects and they had their own quirks and now everything is behaving well enough that you can actually like edit things and get them positioned where you want um, so it's it's possible we'll wind up doing some more iterating on exactly how all this stuff works but at least I think it works well enough now that it's testable and uh, and usable so anyway we will uh, keep you posted um, Let's see, I can go into the uh, uh, other technical fun and games that we've been up to lately. Uh, uh, Alexa, you want to say anything while we're uh, getting rolling here? Um, let's see, latest update. I uh, have touched base with the LDBW team on creating mesh tester content uh, in preparation for all of us testing and then also uh, the end goal of having items in our library so that once uh, Animesh is released to the main grid um, people will have things they can immediately pull out and start playing with. Uh, they have someone assigned to start working on the items and they will keep me up to date. Yeah, that's very cool news. We'll be uh, looking forward to playing around with what they uh, what they do for that. Uh, I hope not, Lucia. Um, 
Let's see, so what else is going on? Uh, the the attachment transformations was the big blocker. Um, the other thing we've been working on recently is uh, the various uh, kind of constraints related to animesh objects. Um, I talked a bit about this last week, uh, but uh, w right now we have, um, you know, there's there's a limit on how many animesh attachments you can have, which is one. There is a uh, land impact surcharge. Um, there's an avatar rendering cost surcharge, and what's the other thing? Yeah, something else I can't think of. Anyway, there's a uh, there's a few different things we're checking. And basically, the intent here is to make sure that uh, you know it isn't possible to just go so berserk with animesh in the test regions that it just completely destroys the test regions. Um, you know, oh, the try count limit, that's the other one. Yeah, we're, we're at uh, 20k triangles now. We boosted up a bit, I think, from the last time we were talking about it. Um, so, the you know, the intent there is to make sure that the, the test regions don't just get completely destroyed by um, the Animesh test, but uh, we'll, we'll be looking at, at all of those uh, in more detail as we get kind of more performance information. So I guess that is it for Animesh news. Um, let's see, what else do we usually talk about? There's the uh, baking service stuff. Um, so we're going on the QA side there. Uh, the the update to increase the bake resolution has the potential to affect performance on the bake servers. So um, we're trying to get a, a load test set up for that and uh, still uh, still poking on it. Uh, yeah, if you can destroy the test regions, uh, you know, using the tools of Animesh, then let us know so we can change things so it's not possible to do that. Um, let's see, wiki page ready yet? Uh, no new wiki stuff currently, um, but, uh, uh, you're talking about particular for telling people how to use the... Uh, Animesh stuff. Yeah, we don't have anything written up on that. Um, that will that will definitely be documented when we go to Project Viewer, you know, so people know what uh, what all of that stuff is. Um, but uh, yeah, we don't have anything to to point people to yet. That's that's one of the things I'll be working on once uh, the the candidate is in testing is trying to get some docs written up. So. There's uh, something for people to look at when they start trying to use this stuff. Uh, let's see. There's a question about how will Animesh attachments work. Um, yeah, so uh, basically the way that works is you can attach an Animesh object to any any animated, any attachment joint in your avatar, um, you know, the same way that you can attach a non-Animesh object to your avatar. Um, so you basically what you're attaching when you do that is um, you know the, the attachment is defined with respect to the root joint of the uh, uh, of the animesh object um, you know, the same as, as when you're positioning it on the uh, on the ground or whatever um, and then you can you can tweak that you can you can edit the translation rotation scale actually the scale doesn't do anything. Um, the translation rotation on your uh, animesh object then to, to you know fine tune the positioning. Uh, does it work for HUD attach points? Uh, yes and no. I, I think I think it, it, you currently can do that, but it really doesn't make any sense. So we should probably uh, should probably turn that off. I don't know. Don't tell me about HUD attachment points. Why would you actually want these things to be in HUD attachments? I mean, what that would mean would be you'd have this little, I don't know, animated sprite hanging out on the screen in front of you that nobody else could see, and I don't know what it'd be doing, whispering things in your ear or something. It, it seems like a weird use case. Um, Flart? 
Uh, but that just, what you just said, I'm making a joke. It seems like you were just, today's your first day at Second Life. I mean, users always come up with crazy, unmentionable things. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I'm uh, obviously thinking that what it makes sense to do is just not allow them to be head attachments, but uh, I, you never know what people are going to come up with, so I'm, I'm semi-seriously asking if people have thoughts about it. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I suspect that even getting it to work would be hard, that, you know, that we'd have to get all the uh, 3D rendering and skeletons and stuff to work in screen space and there's probably half a dozen different things that would break if we tried so it's it's not anything that would make sense to be putting time and effort on yeah clippy i like that oh i guess if it already worked then that would be cool but i don't want anybody <laughs> spending time on it. <laughs> yeah well maybe we should check it out and see what happens i don't know i haven't even tried it yet Uh, let's see, uh, uh, Bunny had a question about the, how the 20k limit works, um, like if you had a 15k animesh and you tried to link a 6k to it, yeah, the, the system does have to reject that sort of thing. Um, there, there's basically two kinds of things you have to look at to make sure this stuff gets enforced. Um, one is when you, you, uh, twiddle the checkbox, you know, to make something into an animesh, and the other thing is when you, uh, you know, do a link operation. Uh, so we uh, we do look at, at both of those things on both the the viewer and the server side. So hopefully it will uh, it will handle all those cases correctly. Uh, yeah, everything's on the server. I mean, you know, I'm a I'm a you know uh, I'm a trusting guy, but. Uh, yeah, we, we definitely, anything that we're calling a rule is enforced by the server. <laughs> A uh, question about mesh bakes. Is there going to be a comprehensive API for inserting textures into the bake stack? Uh, conceivably someday, but that's that's not part of the uh, current update, which is really just an increase to the resolution limit. Uh, can we get an L get object details object try count constant? Um, Uh, it's, did anybody ever file a Jira for that? It's, you know, it's a reasonable thing to propose. It's certainly not going to be done for the project viewer, and it's probably not part of Animesh at all. Um, let's see, other questions. Uh, 20k try is not high enough. Um, yeah, I don't know if 20k tries is high enough. We're, we're, obviously we're going to start as, as, you know, kind of limited as, as we think is potentially useful because you know all this stuff affects performance it's it's all very well if we say hey you can have you know 200k tries in your animeshes and go to town but um, you know basically all the budget for those things is is coming out of uh, uh, of everybody else's budget for what they'd like to to be able to view and display as well and we've uh, we've definitely seen a lot of performance impact from uh, you know it, content that gets a little too excited about uh, about the triangles um, so you know I, I can't say for sure that 20 is going to be the final but uh, it's definitely going to be lo a low enough limit that people are going to have to make an effort to economize if uh, if they want to make this kind of content 
Uh, land impact surcharge currently is 200. Um, that you know is is intended to be high enough that you know you could still get a a reasonable number of animesh objects going at the same time in a region, but uh, you know restrictive enough that you couldn't have uh, uh, you know hundreds and hundreds of them. Is 200 too high? Uh, hopefully 200 is too high. As I say, the, the goal is to, to, you know, not have to make things more restricted after we start testing. But uh, uh, anyway, we will uh, we'll see. The, the, you know, the intent here is to get to, to um, you know, get, get out into test regions and, you know, get things in a state where it's possible for people to, to do tests and, and uh, find out how things work. It's It's not that we necessarily know the final numbers for any of these things yeah 200 isn't the isn't the final number it's the number that we're going to have for the test regions when we first go into project viewer um, question on what you can res in a free 512 square meter land uh, I, I don't know what the what the land impact limits are. Of course, uh, initially it's only going to work in the test regions, and that's that's where we have the value set currently. Now, if we start uh, we start low and go high, then people will will come in and you know go nuts on making all kinds of really cool stuff, and then they'll be really ticked off when we have to throttle it down and say, "Oh no, sorry, you actually can't raise that thing anymore." Uh, Beck asks about the server decompressing the mesh details. Um, right, the server does not decompress the mesh details. What the server has is an estimated uh, size for the meshes based on knowing the size of the various data objects that store the triangles. Um, it's the same numbers that we use currently for the uh, for the rendering cost and the streaming cost calculations and so forth and for land impact. Um, so it's it's based on a, an estimate of triangle count. It's not based on actually unpacking all the triangles and getting the exact number, but it's uh, you know, close enough for government work. Uh, so there's also, uh, Beck also asks about the, um, whether it's going to be a significant load. We are going to have to look at more meshes than we used to. It used to be we only had to look at meshes that we were resing, uh, you know, in, in the region um, for triangle count. Now we have to look at the meshes that we're attaching as well. Um, it is going to be more, more work on the server side, and that's one of the things we're going to have to look at the performance impact. Is there any way we can get a higher count, um, triangle count to begin with, just for testing, knowing that we could go down as low as 20?
And I don't know, people are going to be wanting to test with as many things as they can as well. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about potentially, uh, you know, clobbering the, the region performance and, and having that kind of make the, the testing less useful. The, um, you know, what, what the exact right number is, it's... Uh, you know, obviously there's a there's an element of estimation. We're not these are not based on performance tests. These are just based on trying to get us into uh, you know some kind of reasonable domain where you know people can do some testing without uh, without overloading the regions. Well, I only say this just because I know that um, a lot of the content that we already use in Second Life is not going to be usable for this. Which means that um, stuff will be, have to be optimized. And if we have to go through all this trouble of seriously optimizing something only to find out, hey, we don't like this or this can't work or whatever... So I'm just saying that a higher limit to begin with, just to start testing, uh, it'd be uh, faster to get. Yeah, well, doesn't that cut both ways, though? I mean, if we start out with a high limit and, you know, people, people optimize to get down to that limit, and then that limit turns out to be too high and we have to throttle it down even more, I think there's going to be a lot of, uh, oh, wait, I have to optimize this even more. That's super annoying feedback. Um, you know, obviously it's, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's potentially concerns either way, but. Um... Well, I, I would say that in the realm of like triangle counts, you know, uh, the difference between like 20 and 50 is not very wide uh, versus like a million. Oh, you know? right. Yeah, well, you may be right. Um, you know, when you say you want a higher limit, are you thinking something like 50? Yeah, because 50, I mean, not not too many people have a one avatar you know thing that's more than 50 so at least we'd all be able to test something you know yeah um yeah i'll, I'll think about it. i mean anybody who's concerned about not about the possibility that their their million poly avatars won't work as animesh is you know is, is absolutely right they're definitely gonna have to optimize those um you know, you get into the 20 versus 50 range, um, you know, it's it's more open to discussion. But I totally agree with Veer, though. I hope that you start, or like, at a high low, if that makes sense, rather than to start at a low and then, like, a high and then change it to a low later, because that's going to discourage so many people. Like, well, we used to be able to do it back when it was testing and it worked, but now for some reason they changed it all low and it's terrible. And I don't even want to mess with Animesh anymore. So you're going to run into that. I mean, it's, it's reasonable for us who know how to do it, but if you start out with it being really high and just, just for the testing period, people who are just getting into it are going to be making stuff like crazy and not really looking at the limit. And then when we like, nope, it's being enforced now where it has to be like 20K or something reasonable or they're like, oh, I don't even want to make it anymore. I can't use any of my stuff. Our store is getting shut down. It's all because they did this. It's just a lot of complaints that don't have to be there if we start off like high and then you know what we consider our i'm sorry i kind of lost my chain there <laughs> but you get it right well i think yeah. during well, testing was, phase to... yeah during testing phase i mean we're testing we know things are going to change we know this original mesh we bring in today will not work next week you know that's a given so i don't see where you know, I, I'm not saying to go like 100K. I'm just saying a little bit higher. So, I mean, even when you think about like a human mesh, that the Second Life avatar is really low, and that's 6,000. So a human mesh it's at a thousand. decent scale would be maybe 10,000. And then if that has clothing, you got to at least double that. 
So, I mean, 20K is barely putting clothing on yourself. Yeah, but you got to remember that um, the standard second, uh, second life avatar, uh, the standard human avatar <laughs> um, nowadays is like up there 50 minimum. Um, and a basic furry one is like 19 or so. So, I think that they should just, um, whatever amount, um, they think that they're going to end up with at the target for the release, that they should do that with, uh, testing because you're going to have people that are going to want to test it that haven't been at these meetings and that are not going to know, um, that there's more, uh, in the testing than there will be in the release. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the problem. If we knew exactly what the final numbers we were going to release with were, then we could just set it to those numbers now. Um, the problem is that we don't, you know, until we have, uh, you know, large numbers of people making different kinds of content um, and, you know, testing it all in the same region, um, we don't have really good real world test data on, you know, what the actual performance impact is going to be. The, the best we can do is make some kind of a guess, and that's, you know, basically what the the limits I'm talking about are, are based on is those sort of initial guesses. Even, even 30k to start with, I'd be happy with. Yeah, you know, a lot of the models that I've been testing with seem to seem to fit, you know, well under 20k, but they don't have uh, uh, they don't have a lot of clothing. Um, that seems like that's where the the significant uh, uh, you know increase probably comes from. Yeah, uh, we've got um, some discussion going in parallel about the the bakes on mesh. Um, you know, I should clarify where we are with bakes on mesh. The the very first stage of the project is just to increase the the maximum resolution of texture bakes to to 1024, and so that's that's what we're currently trying to uh, uh, you know get the load testing work done and and get it shipped. The um, the larger bakes on mesh project is intended to help with uh, uh, a lot of the cases where it's it's currently useful to have onion avatars but um, you know that's that's going to be farther down the line that's that's not uh, you know I feel guilty depriving all the babies of diapers. I'm picturing these gangs of protesters with signs that says baby needs a new pair of shoes, you know. Don't, don't give ideas out. <laughs>
Maybe it might be helpful if in determining triangle count for Animesh, we do something similar to what we did for testing new bones in Vento, where you set up a specific region on the beta grid where you can upload Animesh of any size, and that way we can test the region performance and see what's going to be feasible and what's not. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting point. Uh, the way we have it set up right now, uh, the the limit is is set on the server, and then the server communicates that limit to the viewer. So um, it actually would be possible to have a, a you know a region that had different rules on that stuff, and that might be one way to um, you know let people do more uh, more flexible testing. We we did do something like that with Bento, where we had uh, test regions where people could do different uh, different skeletons. Well, what's the ultimate goal with the limits? Is it uh, limits on the uh, performance of the servers, or? performance uh, of the users because performance of the users is going to providedly vary for very many uh, variables. <clears throat> so if it's to test the, uh, the limits of the secondary servers, then um, a lot of those people are right. We need to um, do as much as we possibly could. Uh, it's really both. You know, I, I anticipate that the impact on the servers is going to be fairly light. There's not a whole lot more work the servers have to do. They, the the only thing that I'm kind of uncertain about right now is that the servers are going to have to load more mesh information in order to get the triangle counts. Um, you know, and when when people are going around with uh, you know their their uh, you know 50 million trim objects that's going to be a fair amount of extra loading that wasn't happening before um so that that really does need to be tested uh but you know my guess is that most of the most of the extra load is going to be on the viewer side and um you know it, obviously the intent is to you know make this a, a reasonably efficient feature that uh doesn't uh doesn't you know break the the performance of the of the grid any more than it is already. Yeah, so uh, again, the point of this whole exercise is to get this stuff into testing. We want to put it in, onto test regions on a DD so that you guys can start playing around with it, you know, making your own content, uploading things, trying them out. Um, I think, you know, when we get to that stage, then we can have a, a much more informed discussion about, you know, what's the performance impact, what do you need to be able to make certain types of content, and, um, you know, it's, it's, and we'll certainly be continuing the discussion. You know, nothing is, nothing is final when we go out to Project Viewer, but you know, we are trying to, uh, you know, avoid setting expectations to the point that, uh, uh, you know, people are, are going to try to create content that, uh, that ultimately has to get pulled. And adult test regions, yes. Well, one of the benefits to testing that on a specific beta region would be that only the people in this group would know about that beta region or the people who are following the discussion elsewhere. So you're not going to get in a situation where there's other people uploading who don't really know what's going on and don't understand why they're having to make changes. Yeah, that might be one way to uh, approach it. That would be quite a test for the system, though, if we had a region with no limits and we could just go crazy with it.
Yeah, one one question uh, that kind of relates to the discussion that's been going on about the onion avatars is the question of uh, uh, you know being able to to do bakes on mesh in, for uh, for animesh objects as well. Obviously, we we would support that once the once we do the animesh work, that would also work for for animesh objects, and that would then give you a way to get the uh, the effects of some types of, of layering without uh, consuming as many triangles. So um, the baked on mesh for any mesh, your avatar, you would wear whatever textures on your regular avatar and it would get transferred over onto the animesh? And then mm, well, of course, that's the question. Uh, you, really, it's, it, 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 you know, we, we couldn't do that. Um, it's actually kind of a follow-on, right? You, the first step for bakes on mesh is to get it working on avatars because avatars are already supported by the baking service. Um, but we've talked about doing a kind of a second stage animesh project, and that's the point where the uh, you know the bakes on mesh and the um, the and the animesh stuff would kind of come together because uh, at that point we would be allowing um, textures for uh, for animesh objects to be baked and and applied onto onto their own meshes. Okay, so like you'd have some sort of interface, an API, uh, that you would have like a slot for one texture, a slot for another texture, a slot for another texture, and you just put it on those texture, those slots, and then it automatically get baked and then put onto the animation. Yeah, the the idea was you, would be you could have um, you know wearables like shapes and and you know shirts and jackets and things in the inventory of your um, of your animesh object, and then the baking service would be able to use those as the basis for baking the same way that it uses the contents of the current outfit folder for a uh, for an avatar today, and the rest of the logic would be pretty similar. Oh, okay. Uh, so Zuby, I, I hear that you're concerned about the um, about the you know polygon limits, and you, you've got quite a bit of experience with trying to model various uh, kinds of avatars and clothing. What's what's your kind of impression based on the the stuff you've been doing? Uh, yeah, we, we, we've done, you know, all kinds of testing. And especially uh, when you talked about the limits last week or two weeks ago, 
um, you know, we've been looking at, you know, what we have and, um, because most of our stuff, you know, uh, you know, like my elephant, the, my goal with the elephant was to go as low as I could and to still make it look like an elephant. And I think I did pretty good with that, but you know, that's not a Zuby product. And, uh, you know, in a lot of the products that we sell with Zuby, it's all about accessories. It's all about, you know, clothing items or, um, uh, little knickknacks that they buy and um, yeah I mean 20k as a base limit for an avatar and you know maybe like if you had a rats running around your sim even 20k would be way too much for a product like that yeah I mean 20k is way more than you need you know for something like that but for a product that people are going to play with that they're going to engage with that they're, they're going to you know um have a real experience with um you're talking about a completely different product there and 20k is just it's really low so uh Amanda, you've commented do you, that you think somewhere in the 35 to 50 range probably gives you enough uh enough headroom for for outfits as well then i i you know per uh, you know of course everybody wants more and more but i think 50k is pretty reasonable you know um it wouldn't be reasonable like if everybody made their rats running around 50k no that's not reasonable but for this kind, for the kinds of different products that you might have, I think 50k is reasonable. Holy Sail says you're going to get 35k rats. Um, I mean, yes, that, that's exactly it. You know, whatever limit we set, it's it's going to be treated as the lower bound. The vast majority of content is going to be, you know, right up at that limit. Um, and it's going to be wearing all textures that are the maximum allowable resolution and, and so forth. Um, so, you know, it's the, the point of setting the limits isn't to, to, you know, try to be obnoxious and make things hard for people. It's to you know, try to give us some handle for not completely destroying the, the performance of the system. Now, is there any way we could um, tie land impact to triangle count? But, uh, guys, I, I do have to ask you to please keep it civil. Um, there's there's not any point in, uh, in getting into insults here. If, you know, just please please debate on the on the issues. Uh, sorry, Mehdi, what were you saying? I was uh, asking if there's any way you could tie land impact to triangle count. Uh, yeah, that would be a possible way to do it. Uh, you know, having a having a single number for land impact for all animeshes was, uh, again, just kind of a, a placeholder complexity value to make sure that we didn't have... A, uh, you know, extremely large number of these things in our test regions, but uh, it's we certainly could make it proportional. And of course, a lot of the stuff is proportional today when you look at the the other aspects of land impact. Um, 
you know, part of the intuition there is that there's going to be some amount of additional overhead to having an additional skeleton, right? No matter how simple your model is, um, just the fact that you have a complete skeleton is going to impose some additional overhead on, you know, all of the viewers in the region. Um, so it seems like there should be, there should be a number, uh, you know, related to that and then, um, you know, some, you know, some constant and then some, and then something that's proportional to the complexity, which, uh, which, you know, might or might not need to be different than the, the, you know, proportional to complexity land impact that we already have for, uh, you know, for all objects. That, I mean, that could be a very good way. Um, so let's say maybe if the limit was 50, but 50 costs a ton, you know, of land impact. Um, for something like us that, you know, we would be making, let's say a baby or something like that, that somebody would carry around. Now, it wouldn't matter, okay? Because people would, would pay that land impact cost, that extra high cost. But for something like a rat that was roaming around, you know, they want a really low land impact cost. So if the triangles are lower, you know, then they're right. getting a right. lower. So that's, I mean, that's really the question is what, you know, what is the, the cost of just the fact that there is an extra skeleton in the scene uh, as opposed to the, you know, cost that's related to how complex the rat is, whether it's, a, you know, super detailed or not. Um, and, you know, the... I'm pretty sure that there is some fixed cost to just having an extra skeleton. Um, it's probably not as high as 200 land impact. That's, you know, that's just a, a, an initial rough value. Um, so that's that's the kind of thing where, you know, once we have some some test regions with significant amount of stuff going on in them, we can start to, uh, we can start to look at the performance impact, you know, really quantitatively and, and try to come up with a, uh, you know, better numbers for those things. And uh, don't get me wrong, I love that there's a limit, or that there's going to be. Uh, yeah, all the limits we've been talking about are per animesh, and uh, again, what an animesh actually is, is a, a link set that contains one or more um, rigged meshes. So, you know, you, you can have multiple mesh objects that are all, you know, glommed together into a single, into a single animesh object. In that case, there's one skeleton, and there's, uh, you know, a, a complexity that's determined by the, the, you know, triangle count of the individual sub-objects. Um, so, you know, for example, if you did have a, a baby mesh and a, and a diaper mesh, you could stick both of those together into one link set and, you know, that would, you'd be charged for one, for one skeleton for that because they're all animated together and, uh, you know, whatever the fixed per, per animesh uh, land impact is. And then they would both, you know, both those pieces would contribute to the, toward the triangle count limit. Uh, limit needed is per region rather than per object. Um, what do you mean? Like have a limit to the number of, of animesh objects you can have in a, in a region or something like that? Uh, yeah, back an avatar wearing five animesh attachments would be each of those could be 20k, except an avatar wouldn't be able to wear five animesh attachments because we have a, a limit currently of one.
all platforms crash. So where is this viewer? The viewer that hasn't gone to QA yet, you mean? Yeah, so the uh, you know the the rat case is interesting. How many rats can the region support? We don't know. Um, you know, there's there's some impact to having a skeleton, even if you're just using it to to push a rat around that doesn't have very many polys. So if uh, you know if a thousand people all want to do that, um, you know, is the region going to grind to a halt or not? We we haven't done the test yet, but uh, if it turns out that it would grind to a halt, then that's one reason that you would set a you know a fixed land impact per per animesh object in addition to the, the cost that's based on complexity uh, as a way of making sure that there is a, an effective limit on how many of those things can be raised. All right. Well, we're about at time. Um, you know, appreciate all the comments. I understand there's a lot of concerns around the limits, and you know, I, I do want to make clear that what we're talking about right now is just that you know, a there's going to be limits, and and uh, you know, b we're going to be refining what they are as a result of uh, of testing. So, um, you know, I I hope nobody's getting you know too hung up on the specific numbers and just understands that there's going to be some constraints to work within. Um, but uh, you know, we'll definitely be continuing the discussion on that. So I hope I'll be able to say that we have a project viewer in uh, in QA next time we meet, and uh, we'll uh, we'll keep you all posted on our on our progress. Is there a meeting next week, Mark? Because that's the first week in October. Uh, 
uh, you're right. Usually we have a company meeting that conflicts with that. Um, yeah, I see a company meeting on, that would be Thursday yeah. the 5th. Thursday the 5th. Uh, yeah, so probably uh, probably not a meeting next week then. Two weeks, so. Uh, I'll update the wiki page with the uh, latest schedule stuff. It probably, we're probably kind of running off the end of the of the listed things by now. So yeah, I guess it'll be two weeks till our next meeting. All right. I'll talk to you all in a bit then. Thanks for coming. Thank you all. Thanks, Fear. Thanks, everyone.